Hi guys, this current challenge is called get node value. So today we're going to receive a pointer to the head of a linked list and a specific position. So we're going to have a function for our solution and then two parameters. The first one will be a pointer to the head nodes of the list. And the second parameter is going to be an integer representing the position of the node for which we want to get the value. So from there, we can count backwards. That means from the tail nodes, we're not going to start from the head. We're going to start from the tail nodes of the list. And then we need to run through our list until we hit the nodes at the position that we want. And we need to get the value of that node and print it on the console. But we don't have to manage the printing. We only have to return the value of the node. So they explain here that the position of zero means that we are working with the tail directly because we are only looking at the position away from the tail. So let's say we have a position of zero, then zero nodes away from the tail is the tail itself. If we have a position of one, it means we need to go to the node before the tail. So I have this illustration here. Let's say we have a linked list with six nodes and this is the tail right here, what I'm highlighting in yellow. And this is the head. So normally we run through our list from the beginning to the end. This time around, we need to run through our list backwards. So like I explained a position of zero, what I have here, the numbers in black represents the positions. So if we see zero, it means it's the tail. If we see a position of one, it means one node away from the tail. A position of two means two nodes away from the tail and so on. Up until we reach position five in this example of six nodes, and then we will hit the heads. So the position that we receive will be equal to or greater than zero because it will either be the tail or any node before the tail, but it will not be greater than the number of nodes in the list. And that's what you see here in my illustration. We have six nodes, but the last or the highest position that I have here is five, just because the positions are zero based. Just like I explained, we are going to receive two parameters. The first one will be a node pointer to the heads of the list and the position, which will be an integer. But we don't know how many nodes we have in the list. In our function, there is no way for us to find out unless we go through our entire list. So how can we move backwards and nodes away from the tail? So let's say n here equals the, uh, the position. So n nodes away from the tail means it could be two nodes away from the tail or three nodes away from the tail and so on. Well, I have a couple of suggestions here and I will explain why one and two are not the best. So one solution here would be to reverse the entire linked list and then go through it again from the beginning, because then at that point, the beginning will be the tail and the head will be the end. So if we say four nodes away from the tail, after reversing the linked list, that will be equal to saying four nodes away from the beginning. So we can just go through our list from the beginning. We don't care anymore how many nodes we had. One downside with this, um, this approach is that we need to run through our entire linked list once and then have another loop to go through it one more time. So worst case scenario, it will almost be like looping through our linked list twice. It's not the best in terms of time complexity. So let's cancel that out. Now let's look at option number two. We could also go through our entire linked list and then store the pointers of every node inside a vector. So it could be a vector of node pointers. And anytime we visit a node inside our linked list, we will simply store that address in our vector of node pointers. And then we could easily retrieve the pointer using an index. And by doing so, we could access the nodes and then get the data or the value of the nodes. But again, although we will only loop through our linked list once with that approach, we will require extra space. And that's not very good because the auxiliary space is going to become linear. Let's say we have a really long linked list. Our vector is also going to be really large. And we don't want that for, for extra space. So solution number three would be to use two pointers and have them separated by a certain amount of nodes. That's why I'm saying we have a distance of position between them. I have an illustration for you here. So let's say our second parameter is three for the position three. We could have two integers. The first one could be called forward and the second one could be called counter. So we could initialize these two ints to zero at first. And then as we iterate through our linked list, the forward value will go from zero to one, two, three, four, and then five. So the moment the forward value becomes three, which is at this point here, then we will start increasing our counter ints. So the counter starts at zero 
it will move to one. At that moment, our forward value will be here. And then our counter value will increase again and it will hit two. At which point, our forward int will be here. So why does that even make sense? Well, if you check here, forward will have the value five and position here at the top was three. If you look in here, now five minus three is two, meaning that from the beginning, we only need to move two nodes away from the head to be three nodes away from the tail. And that is why it's necessary for us to know how far away we are from the tail. And because the forward in value will increase throughout the loop until the end, we can use that to find out where we need to stop and where we need to get the value to away. So let's switch back to the code here. This is the function called get nodes. It gets the head pointer. So that's the head nodes of our link list. And this is the position from the tail. So first of all, if the head is null, we return negative one because it's not valid. Otherwise we create our counter and forward variables. This is what I had here. And then I have a temp variable that is pointing to the heads and a nodes variable also pointing to the heads. Now temp and nodes, both of them are node pointers. They are not ints, they are node pointers. So then I have this while loop here and I can verify so long as I can move through my link list, I want to move my temp nodes to the next one. In other words, I want to move ahead in my list. So I'm increasing my forward value here. That is what you were saying. My forward value was increasing. And then I'm checking here if forward minus counter is greater than position from tail, then I want to increase the value of my counter. But in the process, I also want to move my node ahead. So that's one thing I think I did not explain so well in my illustration. But when we are moving this counter ahead, it needs to have a node pointer that moves along with it. So that whenever we stop, we have the node to retrieve, which is this one. So here, that's the rule of the node pointer. It moves ahead along with the counter. So um, that's it. Once we are done, our node pointer will be at the position that we require. So we can simply return the data of that node. So that's it. I'm going to run this code now. We've passed the two sample test cases. So I'm going to submit it. And then we're going to look at the C version, which is very similar. So we've passed all the test cases. Let's now switch to C because previously we went in C++. So in C is very much the same thing. If I scroll down here, I have the same logic. If the head is null, we return negative one. Then I have my counter and forward integers. So then I have my temp and node pointers. I will loop until the end of the list. I will increase my forward value throughout my iteration. The temp node will also move ahead along with it, but the node pointer will only move along with the counter int value here. And this is because of that condition inside my if statement right here. So that's it. When we are done, we return the nodes. In fact, everything was pretty much the same except this uh, null keyword, I think. But I'm going to submit it all the same using the C compiler here. And it's going to be the same thing. We've passed all the test cases. If you guys like my solution, please make sure you subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, and I'll catch you next time.